Hey everyone, this week we're doing something a little bit different. Meet my friend Ryan's self-converted camper van, sometimes referred to as Big White Van. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hello, welcome to our van. Our van is a 2017 Dodge Ram ProMaster 2500, 159 inch wheelbase, not extended unfortunately. But we wanted this specific van because all ProMasters are wide enough to have a full-size queen mattress laying horizontally in the van. I guess starting outside in, first thing we got here are our screens, and that's mainly meant just to keep our cats and dogs safe in the van. They're on zippers and Velcro at the bottom, so they're like super secure. A cat's paw can't, uh, you know, claw through it or anything. Sookie, our dog's not gonna bust through it. But, uh, you know, when we're not using them, they're able to be rolled up and put out of the way. Also with the screens, we had these little things made. We called them our baby gates. Everyone knows cats are little plucky animals and we didn't want them pawing at the zipper and possibly getting it up and then them getting out. So when we're not using these, we just, you know, put them up and out of the way. We wanted everything to be as open as possible, so we went ahead and went with a swivel seat. We got it from Swivels R Us, and uh, it's probably my favorite seat in the house, just because I feel like propped up my feet over here. Misty can be over there on the couch, and it's we just get to talk and chat and hang out and do nothing. But I think in any tight area like a van or a bus or an RV, it's really important to just open everything up. Under the seat, actually, Today, Matt and I just got done installing a Webasto heater down here. Let me tell you, it's nice and toasty, keeps us nice and warm, and it's perfect for today because it's actually snowing off and on outside. We unfortunately don't have the Webasto running right now because it's a little loud and uh, it'll be too loud for the microphone, but I'm gonna close this because I'm really freaking cold. All right, moving on, we got the couch. We built it exactly two feet wide for the cushions uh, so you can sleep on it without having to move anything around. I see that a lot in van builds that, you know, people seem to have to slide things in and out to be able to sleep on it and have it functional and we wanted to keep it pretty simple. The seats here are made of like four inch memory foam. We DIY'd everything in this van. The seats, we just wrapped some quarter inch glue on and some like leather. Down here is our Dometic refrigerator. It's a uh, CFX 35 quart and it's uh, you know, it's good enough for us just when we're out for a few days, you know, fruits and veggies in there and whatever else might need to stay cold. We're also traveling with two cats and a dog. So, uh, you know, cats kind of like their little cubbies. So we built this whole area as a little kitty cubby. We'll probably put some blankets or something down there for them, but it'll just be a spot for them to hang out and kind of sleep like cats do. Underneath the couch, we have uh, tons of storage, uh, just because, you know, it's necessary. It's pretty deep, goes way far back there, and then we get a little bit of room in the back of the uh, back of the refrigerator to store whatever we need back there as well, but storage is crucial. All right, our kitchen area, pretty straightforward. Uh, we have no electric water pumps. Everything is run off of just a little marine foot pump. We're rocking two six gallon uh, water tanks, one for fresh, one for gray. We wanted it very simple and uh, just kind of like a plug and play type thing. If we got dirty water, we just get to pour it into grass and then fill it up again. Uh, like I said, our kitchen construction is very straightforward and basic. We just got three drawers. They're relatively large size drawers, so we can fit a whole bunch of stuff in them. Everything's on these soft close hinges, which was one of the most painful things in the world to put together. I hated every second of putting those things together. Our uh, first trip out, actually, after I built this and the kitchenette, we had no way of securing and closing anything. Um, and our very first turn out of the cul-de-sac, all the drawers came screaming out, and uh, Misty had to sit back here for like an hour holding everything in. It was, it was quite funny. For me, it was funny. Not for her. <laughs> Being such a small area, I wanted to have a lot of room to kind of work. So this is the undermount sink area. We got like a little cutting board, just fits flush right there. But also, where are we cooking? Right here. If you flip this over, you get the same amount of workspace here. 
put a cooktop right there. We're rocking the Origo 3000. It's a denatured alcohol stove. We didn't want to have to fool with propane and having to vent propane in the, out of the van. So this is what we got. We've cooked on a few times and pretty great. <laughs> The bed is pretty straightforward. It's just a bed. It's a queen size mattress, but it's a short queen. We had to go with that because all of our electric for the AC and outlets and stuff runs somewhere behind this wall. And I just unfortunately didn't think about that and I can't cut into that wall. This one's desperately crucial because I'm not a large dude. I'm like 5'9", and uh, if I really stretch out, my toes and everything will touch on that side. But overall, it's really comfortable to sleep in. It's nice and cozy in here, and it's a memory foam mattress, so it's pretty great. All right, moving on to the cabinets. It's a pretty straightforward build. I stole the idea from Eamon and Beck, but I have a video on the construction, so maybe Matt will link it somewhere up here. I don't up know which that side top is. corner. Over here? Cool. Right there. <laughs> But yeah, I got everything on these nice soft closed hinges. I do have to put in some, uh, some gas struts or something that'll keep it open because that's kind of annoying. My buddy made these awesome little leather handles that are screwed in right here, but they snap down for when you're driving so nothing comes out. It's the same as down here on the kitchen for the drawers and the, uh, and the cabinet down there. So the idea is this one's gonna be for kitchen area. This is gonna be my storage. This will be Misty, my wife's storage. I think hers is slightly bigger because, of course it is. Okay, under the bed we just have more storage. We have our little Lugaloo for emergency situations only. And on the other side we have our litter box for our cats. And then everywhere in between that is just going to be whatever we need for the road and to take care of them. Back to the cabinets and storage though, on that side of the bed we have a cubby hole that spans the entire width of the van. It's just an area for Misty to be able to put books or bottled water or something, anything. Maybe her phone charger over there, but yeah, I wanted her to have like a little area to store stuff because I can just toss my crap on the couch when we're asleep. But over here, this looks like a uh, shelf, and it is, but mostly it's a kitty walk because like I said earlier, cats like to be in cubbies, but they also like to be up high, and with our overhead storage over there, I wanted the cats to be able to jump from the bed up here and walk and hang out in the overhead storage. All right, moving outside around to the back of the van over here, we got garage space. It's just uh, more storage. Storage is important. And right now we just got random crap, an inflatable kayak, a table, some chairs, some baskets, a rug. I'm sure it's gonna be filled up with more fun stuff in the future. But over here is where we have all of our electrical run. There are two things that I did not do myself on this van. One is all the electrical work, which includes our Max Air vent fan and our Dometic Brisk 2 air conditioning unit. The other thing's the screens. I can't sew. Right here, we're running a lithium uh, 12 volt battery. It's a 100 amp hour battery uh, through a Xantrax 2000 uh, watt inverter. We also have it hooked up to be uh, charged off the alternator when we're driving down the road. We also have wires run for solar, but we don't have solar panels yet, so uh, Renogy, hit me up. We also have it hooked up for uh, 30 amp power for when we're staying at a nice campsite or you know, maybe a national park or a state park or anything like that. If we're not boondocking, we gotta be able to have power. <laughs> All right, so that's our van. It took us a little over four months in total build time to complete, but it's done. But it probably really isn't because any type of DIY project is never really done. <laughs> and I'm glad we got that heater installed. Uh, everything's working with that. So Some toasty. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching this video. I know uh, I really enjoyed working with Ryan and, and being able to meet him. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell to be notified as we post new content. We'll have more van build videos of our own coming your way. And uh, who knows, maybe more collabs down the, down the way. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Now get lost. <laughs>